All right, so we are in learning targets for our next unit called integers. And so we're gonna learn about what an integer is today, as well as interpret them, order them, and compare them. So remember expectations, pause the video as you need. This whole unit has a lot more practice in it. So you'll be, you, be, yeah, you will be pausing a lot more often to do the question on your own and then hit play to check it after I find the answer. So um, just an FYI, there is a lot more pausing. So it's not just writing, there's a lot more practice that are quick for you to do in this unit. So there is our expectations for after the video and our recording. All right, so we are on order integers and we are now on page 15. Okie dokie. There is our title and our learning target. We're going to start out by defining the word integer. So an integer is a whole number that can be negative or it could be zero or it can be positive. So we've dealt with positive whole numbers a lot. That's what, what, that's what you've seen your whole life so far. Now we're going to introduce those negatives in there as well. So we're gonna do some interpreting. So let's interpret negative five. What is a real world application? What could negative five represent? Pause and think about it. One thing it could be would be, um, oh, I owe you, I owe $5 to somebody, so I spent that $5 or it's negative in my bank account. Um, what could 12 represent? If you're on the same money track, it could be that you earned $12. Or you walked 12 feet, you're in the positive, you're going towards something. Um, what could zero mean? If you're in the distance thing, zero could be the starting line of a race. And then what if we go backwards? What if we write out the interpretation and you have to tell me what the integer is. So think about this. What integer could represent 50 feet below sea level? What integer could represent a gain of 20 yards, say in a football game? And what integer could represent a plane that descended 1,500 feet. What are some integers that would represent these three scenarios? Pause the video. So if you're below something, that could be negative 50 feet. A gain is positive. Now the other team has a loss of 20, so that would be a negative 20 yards. But for the gain, it'd be 20 yards. Positive, plane descended. So it's getting closer to the ground, farther away from where it was. It went down from where it was, so it's a negative 1,500. All right, so that's interpreting. Now let's do some ordering. Actually, I should label this. I should label these. Okay, we're gonna label this as interpret. Our next section we're gonna label is ordering. So D, ordering. All right, so we're gonna have two examples. I'll do the first one and then I want you to do the second one on your own. So our first example uses the numbers 5, 3, negative 2, 2, negative 5, negative 1. And we're going to draw a number line underneath this and put 0 in the middle. So 0 is in the middle because on the left-hand side we have all of our negatives. On the right-hand side we have all of our positives. And now I'm going to put these numbers on the number line. So if I count out 5, positive 1, positive 2, positive three, positive four, positive five. Put a big circle. And then positive three, we already went past that. Negative two is going to the left two. Negative one, negative two. Because I'm counting more as I'm going to the left. So this is negative two. Positive two is going right two. Negative five, negative three, negative four, negative five. And I also have negative one. 
Now they're already in order because our number line is always in order. So if I was to say, order these from least to greatest, your final answer should be negative five, negative two, negative one. Oh, I didn't label that one. Two, three, five. That would be your final answer. So look at this, look at the patterns. I want you to try this one on your own. If I was gonna order negative four, one, zero, negative three, negative one, and two. So draw your number line, plot your points, and order them from least to greatest. Your final answer, you should have paused and done this by now. So your final answer should be negative four, negative three, negative one, zero, one, and two. If you wrote this, I'm assuming you know how to find it. You are listening to me and you're not just skimming through this. How do you find this? Can you explain to someone else? Okay, if you can, then move on. If you can't, then look back over it and ask someone next to you. So that was interpreting and ordering. Now our last thing is comparing before we do an extension. So we're gonna, com Ooh, you can't see that. Comparing! This is a bunch of practice, so I'm gonna pause it after I write them. Actually, I wanna pause the recording for right now. And, okay, so we are still recording, awesome. So I wrote these down. I want you to pause the video and can you figure out what goes in the circle? Remember, in the circle will either be a less than, a greater than, or an equal to. So pick which symbol is the best one to fit into the circles. Pause the video. You should have, on a number line, notice that negative nine is farther left on your number line. So negative nine will be less than five. Negative eight is less than zero because it's to the left. Negative 10 though is actually to the right of negative 20. So if I owe you $10, that's better than owing you $20. This is a, this is a larger number. So negative 10 is greater than negative 20. Again, if I owe you $7, or it's negative seven degrees outside, and it, then it's negative five degrees outside, it warmed up to go towards the negative five. So negative five is a larger number. It's warmer than negative seven degrees. Um, Four degrees outside is not as big as eight degrees. Oop, I did that one wrong. <laughs> eight degrees outside is greater than four degrees outside. One degree outside is greater than negative six. If I owe you money, that's less than if I have seven dollars. And the negative four is the exact same as negative four. All right, so look at your symbols. Make sure you understand them. We're going to be doing an extension with a distance. So this last section is gonna be distance. I know today's notes have been super long, but you can do it. Distance. So we have a fancy word for distance when we use integers, and we have a fancy way of writing it, and we call it an absolute value. Holding my wire, okay. We call it an absolute value. So its value doesn't change. And it's the distance of a number from zero. So it's how far away some number is from zero. So for example, the absolute value of negative 10 and the absolute value of 10. These bars mean absolute value. What do these bars mean? What do these bars mean? So if I'm on a number line, I have zero in the middle. I'm gonna plot out to negative 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, there's negative 10. And plot net positive 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay. How far away is negative 10 from zero? It's only 10 spaces from zero. How far is positive 10 from zero? It's also 10 spaces. So this is just the distance a number is from zero. An interpretation of this would be, um, so like if zero is the starting line, negative 10 would be having a 10 foot head start. How much of a head start? 10, because they're 10 feet away from the starting line. Okay, 
So then we're going to order and compare. Now we didn't have to write down the interpretation. We're going to order. All right. A bunch of markers here. They're all rolling away. Okay. So our first one that we're going to order is negative 2, absolute value of negative 7, 9, 0, 8, absolute value, or 18. There we go. 18, why not? Absolute value of negative 1. So these are my bars. If you look on your computer, the bar is above your return button. Above your shift, then your return, and then there's a bar. So if you hit shift that way, you get a little bar for the absolute value. So I'm going to look at these, and I want to write, drop all those on the floor. I want to write what the same number is. So negative 2, is this an absolute value? No. Negative 7, is this an absolute value? Yes, because of the bars. How far is negative 7 from 0? 7. So we're going to treat this like it's 7. 9 is fine, 0 is fine, 18 is fine. Absolute value of negative 1. How far away from 0 is negative 1? 1. So we're going to treat this like it's positive 1. So when I reorder this, the smallest number I see is the negative 2. Yeah. Yeah, I'll write it down here. Negative 2. The next, I'm put check mark. The next number I see is 0. After 0 comes 1, but I don't want to write 1. I'm actually writing the number it gave me, so I'm writing the absolute value of negative 1. After that comes 7, but again, absolute value of negative 7. Then I do 9, and then I do 18. So notice how I rewrote this from least to greatest, least to greatest, in the original format that there is. Okay, I'm going to give you another example, but I want you to pause and do it on your own. Then I'll just write the answer. Um, so for yours, I want you to order 8, the absolute value of 3, negative 5, absolute value of negative 2, and negative 2. So pause the video. When you ordered this, you should have negative 5 come first. Then you should have negative 2. After that, this is 2, 3, and 8. So then this should come third, but you should have written it and kept it in the absolute value form. Then you should have absolute value of 3. Don't forget the bars. And then 8 should be your last one. So that would be the correct order of how you would write it. Okay. And then last little bitty bit. I know it's a little tiny bitty bit. Okay, compare. I'm going to pause the video. All right, so I wrote down these four examples. I'm going to do one of them, but I want you to finish the rest on your own. Then you're done. <laughs> okay, so the absolute value of negative 2, say that out loud. The absolute value of negative 2 is what compared to negative 1? So the absolute value of negative 2, if we go 1, 2, notice that it's 2 away from 0. So this is being treated like a 2. It's not 2, but it's treated like a 2. Is 2 greater than or less than negative 1? Greater than. So you should have a greater than symbol there. So as you go through, treat them, treat the absolute values as the distance they are, but then think about you're still writing them in this format. So that should be, oh, I guess pause here, then I'll write the answers. Okay, so 10 is less than 11. Negative 7 is less than 6. Negative 9. 9 is the same as 9, so they're equal. We're good. Okay. All done. PowerPoint. There we go. Were you focused? Does this make sense? Ask me questions if you're stuck, okay? You need to know, do I understand this or not? Can you, can you interpret, order, and compare integers? And this should not have a use in it. It should just be interpret. Can you interpret, order, and compare integers? Can you define what absolute value is? And then can you also interpret, order, and compare integers when you take the absolute value? So that's what you need to be able to do. All right. Have a great day. Bye.